All right, uh, hello again. This is Philip at thebest3d.com, and I'm going to talk a little bit about making clouds. Uh, this will be probably just the first of two parts. Um, this one um, is inspired, I think I mentioned this before, actually, in the dog waffler of the moment, the Dardom page on our website. You'll see if you scroll down, there's one called Draws Attention. And um, <coughs> that um, that user of dog waffle dates back to many years. Um, there's some new images on DeviantArt, uh, but uh, you can see here early on she already did some interesting designs and illustrations. And <coughs> what I'd like to do is particularly focus on this one here. September 2009, some additions um, <coughs> created some brushes that are now actually integral part of uh, Harler, so you have those as well. Uh, if you look in the freebies area, you can see back then this was uh, PD Pro 4, the days of uh, Project Dog Waffle version 4. We are now at version 10, so you can tell there is a, a lot of uh, has been a lot of development since then. But uh, this was at a time when uh, you could uh, simply add those media files to the folder where the material was going to be visible uh, through the browser after insertion. And uh, so here's some clouds, uh, KB Cloud, KB Cloud Gadget. <coughs> There's a couple of um, brushes that became part of this. And so this is the type of brushes that can easily let you paint backgrounds like these or individual clouds that you might want to then integrate somewhere. So <clears throat> uh, integrate that into a game, into a 3D engine, into a layered uh, assembly, uh, all sorts of different uses for that. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> Essentially, we have <clears throat> to go to the Browse for Media. And <clears throat> in there, there is this category called KB, right? And that's where that magic is happening. Let's go resize this a little bit. Let me grab the corner. <clears throat> and then you'll see them right there. There's KB Cloud Lining, KB Cloud Brush. Let's start with this one here. And <coughs> oh, I should probably pick it. There you go. Okay, now uh, let me mo uh, make sure this thing stays there. So I'm going to pin it down. And I'm going to go make it even more narrow. <coughs> so we have just the first one here. Um, KB, that's a bush. That's for drawing. Well, that would be in green probably. <coughs> Trees. Um, there is cloud brush. There you go. All right, so let's go and select something whitish or light gray, right? And or dark. Um, let's go white on the left button and dark on the right button. So you see primary and secondary color. <laughs> and um, then what we'll do is we'll clear the image. That will clear to black, and we can start painting. All right, so that's already an interesting start for a brush. You can see it's randomly rotating. Uh, when you look at the brush settings, that's here under settings. Uh, the brush settings, I'm going to pin them down to. Um, <clears throat> there's a bunch of parameters here, random size, random angle, uh, and random position. Those things really help in creating sort of a very uh, random looking scattered uh, appearance. Uh, you may even increase the size here to make even more random sizes. There's also the size based on the speed. Um, you can see that parameter somewhere here, speed scale. Right? If you if you make it high, let's go clear this. As you go slowly, it stays at the same size roughly. Plus there is the random size though. But if you move faster, it goes smaller. Right? So you can, <clears throat> as you as you move around this, you can create some uh, slow paint slowly to create some big areas and then a little bit faster to create some small fine detail that kind of branches out uh, that might be a little bit too much i just wanted to um, show some of that capability <coughs> in case you're looking to create some very stylized clouds right not all clouds have to look <coughs> realistic <coughs> you also will want to uh, perhaps add a little bit of darkness to it especially on the bottom side right if, if for instance they are being lit by the sun if the sun is expected somewhere up above here you'll want to tint them darker on the lower end so maybe for that we can also reduce the opacity a little bit so it doesn't go too fast to that dark side uh, something like this here 
So you have a little bit more uh, refined control of of how to do that transition. Right? Some silver lining uh, and then some darkening, and silver lining and darkening. Right. So <clears throat> so that's the thing I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Just an idea of where you can grab some brushes. There's a couple. There's a cloud gadget that do some additional fuzzy. Um, <clears throat> there's some cloud gadgets and cloud lining and sometimes that's really a good approach to use some big highlights there and then you go back to uh, the gadget and further uh, blur them or add some more shade so play with this a little bit until you figure out which ones you like which ones you're gonna use and uh, you know there's nothing wrong with creating your own also if you want to modify some of these parameters and then store them in here so you have your additional um, cloud oriented uh, tools um, so that's uh, one starting point here to create some clouds and then of course um, <clears throat> in another tutorial we'll look at uh, how to make them appear opaque against a transparent background now we can actually already do that right here as one approach and that's to simply uh, take this also as a uh, transparency mask Right, we might say, well, okay, so there is some darker parts that should perhaps be opaque, or maybe they should be semi-translucent, and you could see partly through it. Especially along the edges, we should do that too. So one one way to handle that is to simply say, okay, let's first of all store an image of this, uh, a copy of this image, <coughs> and then uh, transition that, transfer that into the uh, alpha channel. Right. So one way to do that is, I'll show you two ways again here. One way is to uh, copy that to the swap image right and then you see it here on, on the on the swap image um, maybe if we make this a little bit smaller <clears throat> where's the layers options tiny there you see now there's a copy this one is the main image this one here is the swap image right <clears throat> and of course they are identical uh, because I just copied one to the other and then I can copy uh, here under the alpha menu I can copy that swap image to the alpha, right? And so now I get the, the marching ants. Here, let me turn the brush preview off. I, I can see the marching ants. I can see also the discoloration of the non-selected parts, the transparent parts. You see under the selection menu, uh, that's with the overlay, right? If I turn that off, you just see the marching ants. And if you turn that off, you don't have no idea that something is selected or disabled. Uh, so be sure to keep that and uh, so now it's perhaps a matter of adjusting that transparency level right, you could possibly um, uh, first of all under the selection menu make sure it's taking the full dynamic range right expand dynamic range uh, that means that this black area really is fully transparent and this white area there's some of them here that are going to be to the full level of white uh, you can actually find them you can go to the uh, color picker here and pick the values and you'll probably find perhaps one pixel that is at the maximum value. Difficult to find it though, it's, it's uh, going to be just one or two pixels probably somewhere around here. And um, if you want more of them, what you do is you adjust. Right? You adjust the selection right here from the selection menu and with that you can give it perhaps more contrast and you can see how adjusting that contrast allows you to tighten or expand the the reach of the bright pixels uh, in the alpha channel that means the selection and so um, what we have is a cat that needs to be fed <laughs> that's the background sounds um, but what we have here is uh, you know a transparency mask that we can probably use uh, to give it a little bit of um, of a, of a transparency mask uh, let's go one more time in there and perhaps give it even more adjust selection uh, a little bit more brightness for the parts that are already selected and a little bit darkness around it so it's really going to be fully transparent here we can also adjust as I said the contrast the gamma something like this okay so now we have a selection that is 
uh, usable as the transparency mask or opacity on the inside. Uh, and so one thing that you could do at this point is simply pick it up as a custom brush right, and then save it. Um, you can do that automatically if um, we don't have any selected parts on the outside, really only just on the inside. You can go here with you selected as brush, uh, take a look at storing this so you can see it. And then of course also um, selection, uh, where is it, brush, oh, no, uh, just show it. Like, make it visible and then you have this brush image and you can start painting with that but keep in mind it still has those random scale and position and size possibly some of these parameters might need to be readjusted or you can start painting with that now if I go back the other way I just wanted to show another way to pick that up if I go back all the way to the point where I have the selection um, I can also do that automatically here with brush you selected this brush and so now it has picked that same thing up um, and uh, again I can store that and then once I've stored that brush um, it's really just to confirm that it's working you can actually use it now at this point also and make a bigger one uh, you can also you know start uh, erasing to a different color and, and painting with this or <clears throat> um, animating right uh, one, one thing that you'd like to do perhaps is um, have an animation where there is these clouds are going from left to right um, against perhaps a, a different colored um, a sky. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's create an image at this point that will be uh, or something like uh, 960 by 540. And that's probably bigger than what we need for a screen, a web presentation. Let's make it even smaller actually. Let's make it 640 by 360. 360. There you go. All right, so we have um, an animation, though we want something in there that's going to be a gradient. So I'm going to go use my gradient here, right click on this tool that has uh, the linear gradient and then select a gradient that will be suitable for skies. Here, this one here, metals. Actually, we can use that. That's upside down. Let's go something like this. Okay, so we have a little bit of a ground coloration there. And then we have a sky, or maybe not, maybe just the sky. There you go. Um, and what we want to do is have this turn into an animation. Let's go create. And uh, say we want about three seconds. So 90 frames. We can give it a few more. Let's give it 95, 96. All right. And then store this animation. This is a blank animation. No things moving yet. Every frame is identical. Um, I'm going to go store this to disk just so we have a quick way to get back to it and try all over again if we mess up. <coughs> so what we'll do next is <coughs> to <coughs> to bring this cloud in. <coughs> Where is that um, cloud? There it is. Um, and we'll make it uh, a little bit smaller. It was this one here. Uh, let's go make it a bit smaller. There you go. In fact, we'll have a couple. Right, so we can we can paint this from left to right um, if it is an animated brush, it needs to have at least two frames. And right now, this one has just one. So if I go show film strip, you see there's only one image. But uh, no problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, reset to the full size. There it is. Um, and, and then copy itself to it. Add a frame here. So we now have two. And it is therefore an animated brush. Which means I can paint it from left to right with the Alt key down. If I paint it from left to right without the Alt key, just like this, it's painting into the current frame, right? And I've a scrubbing here. You can see this frame has been modified. Let me undo that. And now instead, I'm going to paint with the Alt key. With the Alt key down means that it's going from one frame to the next. And you can see here, it affected all of the frames here, or a whole sequence of frames. And so now we now actually have an animation. Very jittery because I have this random... Uh, cup of coffee in my hand <laughs> or or maybe it's with this settings here probably some random position still yep there it is okay so let's get rid of that uh, let's make sure when we draw something like this it's a little bit more steady so let's do another one let's uh, let's draw a smaller one actually <coughs> let's uh, resize this and alt key down left to right left to right now they're all going at about the same speed and of course we'd like to not do that we'd like to have some of the small ones far away appear uh, going slower all right so for that we need to give them less step distance 
So what you do is you bring it down to about this much. And let me restore the animation to the blank one here. Just click here, that will restore. There you go. <coughs> Reposition it here. Okay, so I'm going to make it a really small one here first. <coughs> Something like this. And that one is going to be going from left to right very slowly because I have the step distance down to about three or four. Something like that. All right, something like this. So go from with the Alt key down, left to right. Boom. And it's it's got there uh, often enough to actually uh, recycle. But you can see it go from left to right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is simply uh, increase the size a little, a little bit here. <coughs> Make it a little bit bigger. And then also increase the speed by increasing the step distance. So I have to move maybe to 6, something like that. Now I'm going from left to right whoop, a little bit faster. And you can see now that cloud is moving faster across the animation. And then I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to go uh, a little bit bigger again and increase perhaps to 8. Right. There you go. And there you go. Do a second one of the same size. There you go. So we now have several animations on top here. Uh, that's all hand painted, right? And it is subject to a little bit of... of random appearance, messy appearance, whatever you want to call it. And there is another technique. Let me go re restore the blank animation here. And this other technique, <coughs> uh, let me go with uh, uh, reset to full size here with my reset. There you go. Um, what, what I want to do is uh, use the keyframer for the brush, right? So there is a brush keyframer here under the animation menu, brush keyframer. And it pops the animation into a separate window that you can work with a different size. And you can get the brush, so there it is. You can move it around. You can also scale it. So you can make a scale down version of it. And you have a, a timeline here to go one frame at a time and say, OK, I want it from about here. Make a keyframe. Set a keyframe right there. Then go to the end and move it over to the right. And unfortunately, there's no way to make it exactly horizontal there. That'd be nice in the future version, but you have at least a, a little bit of a, a linear path here. You can see a dotted line if you look closely here. And if it's a little bit going up, you just remove it. You know, you move it down to the last frame, move it down a little bit, and re-keyframe it. Right? And hopefully that will do. Now, one thing to know also, it's not doing a linear interpolation. Uh, you will want to click here to make that a linear interpolation if you want them to just move steadily from left to right. OK, and then render that. <coughs> so now we have an animation that you can actually see here and play. And you can see it's done a nice job at animating this. And you can take it again. You can go to um, you know, key, kill all frames, clear all frames, and uh, go to the first and maybe increase the size. Go to the first frame, increase the size, change the position, maybe even go outside of it. Right, you don't have to see it necessarily, or or maybe it's already here, but you want it out of the way. So from here, keyframe, go to the last one, grab it, and move it out to about this far. And if you need to move it out further, just move this thing out and go further, or, or change the size. Right, you can resize this so you have even more relative distance that you can travel. Or you can say, <coughs> here at this frame already, I want it out. It's right? something like this. And keyframe it. And then from here on, it doesn't matter where it's going to be afterwards. It's not going to be visible anyway. So let's go render that. All right? And then let's do one more. Let's, keyframe, let's clear, clear the keyframes. And one more time, go to the beginning uh, and say, this is going to be a big one that initially is outside. So we need to see it, though, first. So let's set the size like this. You can also make it a little bit more transparent. Reduce that opacity. Yeah, so you can see through it even more. Um, and there are a couple of other options here, by the way, but let's not use these for today. Uh, there is some opaque and some other modes. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's go and do something like uh, have this dude come be outside from here, and even for a little while longer, still be outside, and then about all the way to well, all the way to the end, we'll move it in and still be in. So it's going to actually move slow. Even though it's closer, it should be, you know, it should be moving faster. 
but uh, maybe just for the sake of demo, we'll show it's not visible. Now it comes in, and there it is, still moving faster than this one in the back. Render that puppy, <coughs> and we now have close that, and we now have the animation of a couple of clouds like these. All right, so hopefully that'll get you some ideas of how to create a composition, how to <coughs> uh, work just creating these clouds in the first place. We'll explore some more on that transparency, the techniques, because uh, you can also paint the transparency, right? But that'll be for another tutorial. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next time.